the heck of the battle tomorrow and Sunday, we will be doing an amputation. Uh, we already did a bullet pull, and we'll be doing a tooth pull. I'm Dr. Johnson. And I'm Dr. Cutter Spencer. Dr. Chad Benson. And we will be performing surgery tomorrow. This is Private Walter Alvin Cremines. He's a Yankee, and you can see he's got a gray jacket on, so he's a deserter. He's a horse thief. He was shot trying to escape. He was shot in the arm and the leg, and the leg wound seems to be worse. So we're, we're going to do with that. And we're going to pull the bullet out, and we're going to use that real tourniquet from Civil War. And we're probably going to use horse hair to sew his leg up, because we're out of the good seal. These are real knives and you would not believe how sharp they are and as you can see the cursive writing timing that proves it's pre-war this is another time and this is 67 New York and this is a different type set you still have the uh, major capital saw this is a hay saw these are sterling silver catheters with threaders in them. This is a bone brush to brush away the flakes of the bone. This is part of the uh, trephine set that's in the, the case. This would be used to pry bones. This is a bullet puller. Under here we have another set of very sharp saw blades. And again, the cursive writing proves this is made before the war. Uh, this piece is part of the handle that you would put these two pieces together and drill holes in the head called a terthene. This is called a giggle saw and as you can see the blades on this thing are like a chainsaw and this was threaded through small areas where it was hard to get to and they would cross these two and jiggle it back and forth and cut the bone in two. This is a trophine set. Again, you take the handle and you have a choice of saws. The original key, a bone saw, original bone, or bone brush, original bone brush. And if you wanted to, you could do a square hole. You would use this and cut a you know, hole and make a square hole. That is called a hay saw, and you have the file for the skull and something to pry it out with. Uh, that is all, um, that's original, and if you look, see all the metal plating and things on that? That is military, military issue and contracting. This is a uh, trophine, would be placed on the skull and cranked and make a hole in the head to relieve pressure. This would be the equivalent of a cast in a civil war. If your arm was broke uh, or fractured maybe, this would be put there and then wrapped. And that's, that would be the equivalent of a cast in 1860. If you were lucky, you would get one on each side. If you weren't lucky, you would just get one. But again, these are real from the Civil War. Silver nitrate. This is a medicine chest, and this is everything a doctor would have had to have treated you in the Civil War. He would have to be a very rich doctor to have something this nice. And this is a medicine chest. And this would have contained all the medicines equal to a wonderful pharmacy. Even in the Civil War, we had drug addicts. So the doctor would have his chest like this. And when the patient wasn't in the room, he would mix his medicines and things. If the patient broke into his office and tried to find the morphine or some of the better drugs, uh, logged them and some of those things he wouldn't find it he would find a box like this and even if he got it open he's not going to find 
and you will see this little switch right here when that's pushed back it doesn't open in the back when the doctor wants in there the doctor knows to throw this little switch hear that okay very ingenious now it will slide open and there is all your medicine American made apothecary chest this one right here is from the 1700s and it is an apothecary chest they didn't say medicines back then they called it apothecary and these are some of the items that would have been in the apothecary chest uh, a mortal and pestle, uh, weight scales to measure out your medicine, scoops, bottles to put it in, and these would, would have all been things that were in there. And it has a lock here. Let's see. And again, you have very interesting, he would uh, put his medicines on here and use that spoon or the spatula to mix his medicines so it had a dual purpose holding and mixing and you turn this one around and it's not a secret compartment but again it, if it's setting up against the wall now all these labels are original labels You ever seen anything like that? No, nope, never have. And you never will again. It goes back to my house. Be or awake the, at this time, no anesthetic. Yeah, no anesthetic or, or the bullet. Now that we realize, you know, that bullet ain't very deep in there, so we're going to go pull it. So after I found out where it's at with the probe, we go with the if, uh, bullet retractors. We dig into the now remember this is no anesthetic yet we're just trying to help him out as much as possible and keep him out of pain so we pull that 58 caliber bullet out that's one ounce of lead and that was 90 percent of the guns that were used during the civil war was a 58 caliber and like you know they did a lot of awful damage when they hit into a bone they shattered it it just didn't snap in two so the best thing you had to do was now that we figured out where it's at and the bones all busted we're going to have to amputate. So well, now, I will give him some go ahead with the anesthetic. Because he is Private Walter Robin Cremains. He is a Yankee. He's a deserter and a horse thief. We know he's a deserter because he's got a Confederate jacket on. They shot him when he was trying to escape with that horse. So he's a horse thief and a deserter. Both hanging offenses, so we're going to doctor him, fix that Private Walter Robin Cremains up so we can properly hang him. <laughs> now, uh, there's only one major battle in Georgia where there was no anesthetic and it wasn't because they didn't want to use it. They simply ran out. They knew how to make ether. They knew how to make chloroform. Those are the only two anesthetics they knew how to make. They also had a which was heroin. So they would take an ether cone and pour a valve in here. We don't even chuck on that bullet. Somebody yeah. told him. Somebody told him to bite a bullet, and he get his leg cut off. But what's what's he gonna do when he bites that bullet? He's gonna swallow it. Well, when he hollers, it's gonna drop right down his throat. So yeah. we're gonna give him a little bit of ether and pour it on the cone. The ether is a heavy gas. It's going to go down, and I have to, we have to be outside while we're doing this because ether is very explosive. So it's cool for him. We have to be outside while we're doing this. So thus, we're out in the open air, and we check Alvin. He's fighting around a little bit because he doesn't want it done, but this is gonna have to happen. So once he goes to sleep, he goes into like a twilight sleep, and I'll check him. He's asleep, cut that leg off. Okay, then we're coming into here, and we realize what we're gonna have to do is come up about midway in the leg, Oh, doctor, we're out of uh, silk thread. Okay. Somebody find us some horse hair, and the back end of the horse will be just fine. Please give us some horse hair. Anybody got any horse? Oh, well, we have horse hair. When we run out of silk thread, we use horse hair. 
So I'll thread that. Let me get threaded before we cut his leg okay. off. Okay. I remember uh, during that time, about 15 minutes is all you wanted your patient out. So you had about 15 time, 15 minutes to, to work on them because any more time that they would go into coma and die. And a lot of them didn't know that at the time when they were doing that. But they would take their time to work on a patient and then all of a sudden they looked over the dead. So, so they had to be very careful. So We take this tourniquet and turn it down till it's tight on the femoral artery. We feel for a pulse. If there's a pulse, we have to tighten it down some more. No pulse. Doctor. And then we begin cutting. We take the and cut all the way down to the bone on this side. We come back here and cut all the way down to the bone on this side. This is called a bird's mouth cut. Okay, now we need to check and make sure he's not. Now we've got a bleeder going on here. It's bleeding, so tighten that tourniquet a little bit tighter so we can stop the blood flow. All right, we got the blood flow. Give me the needle and thread. Clamp it And we'll clamp, we'll clamp it off to keep it from bleeding. There we go. Okay, that's good. We got it clamped off. We don't want him to bleed to death. Come in here with a thread, needle and thread. We we'll get a hold of that artery. We we'll stitch it up. Run it, run one through without sticking myself. At this time, doctors do nothing of germs and bacteria. They don't wash their hands between the patient. They just um, go they would, from one patient to the other. And they would wrap it up like that and leave that thread in there for right now. And leave that making leave the plug. Leave it alone. And now we got to get ready to cut. So here's a we saw. Have to use the saw. And I will hold down and you go in there to cut. Get into the... All right, we've got it cut off and then we just throw it into the pile just like the rest of them. So now as this one here is already together, I can unhook the hemostats, take them off. Uh-oh, we're bleeding again. Tighten it up some more. Okay, okay, that's good. Then we'll take the bird mouth and pull it back together. Usually it's a two two man situation. You want to you want to sew and I hold. So we will sew it back up and it'll be a loop uh, loop stitch just to hold it together. Then after it's looped all the way around, we would take a bandage. It's good. Now there's all his right. plug hanging out. Yeah, his plug hanging out. Oh, let's don't use a clean bandage. Let's use oh, one of these dirty bandages. Dirty, dirty bandages, sure. Why not? Then he would be bandaged back up. With the plug hanging with out. With the plug hanging out. There we go, like that. And then our sisters would come over and they would take him to a shade tree, give him water. Hopefully he's coming out of an anesthesia. He's going to moan and groan and he's going to hurt. But we saved his life. Now it's up to the judge to figure out what they're going to do with him since he's a thief, a horse thief. Deserter. Uh, he's a deserter. A Yankee. And they're going to hang him after we've saved his life. But, but the, the rest of the soldiers that come in would be done the same thing to them, and they would be brought to a shade tree, they would give them water, and then over time they would find out what unit they're from, they would find out what city and state they came from, and their family. Uh, and then the family would take care of them, and, and the physician that are in town would go ahead and continue uh, the healing process.